is they put a wide out back here in the back field and they're going to end up motioning him out. does not mean anything different to us. And we're going to end up line up just like they came out in a pro twins look once that motion happens. But again, you can see what's happening from the strong safety position here a little bit. They started out and everybody's talking, hey, there's a freaking wide receiver in the backfield back here. D linemen are telling the linebackers, safeties are seeing it. Again, it becomes a communication deal. Okay, once this guy motioned out, now the strong safety did what? I deepened myself up a little bit and now I got myself back inside with all of it. Again, there is one gap or one back, one ball, I'm a one gap, we're now a gap scheme with everything that happens with all of it. Okay, again, most of the time when we're in 11 personnel, we're going to play our three technique to the tight end side with it. Okay, and again, you can see kind of the, the leverage that we're going to play with our nose in the gap, with the nose guard and the three technique. Again, you can see how balanced our stance is with our six technique too. And again, he's going to read that tackle. That tackle blocks down. I'm now stepping myself in to that C gap with all of it. Again, what can happen to me if I'm the weak safety now and that play starts going away from me? I can get the boot and I can get the cut back off of it. Now we're getting the cut back. Here it comes. I've got to get myself down in a position where I can go make a play on the cut back with it. All right, here's a good look of them trying to arc release the tight end and get out of there. The same thing for our defensive end, though. Okay, that tackle's blocking down, so what's he doing? They're actually trying to pull here and get everything. We're going to end up spilling it with that defensive end. Linebacker's going to step around, and he's going to be tight with all of it now. We should get a pull call here by the backside linebacker. And we're actually slanting up front with our two, with our two tackles. We've got an aim call going. So we started with our three technique here. They're stepping inside and going this way. But again, you can see how balanced of stance we have with that six technique. And as that tackle blocks down, I want to squeeze and close to his hip. Here comes the guard coming back to me. He's going to wrong arm the thing and spill it. Linebacker's stepping around, and he's fitting the outside part of it. The weak safety does not know right now if it's a run or it's a pass. What we tell him is if they release the tight end vertical, he's got to play it like a pass because he does not know them. And somebody else has got to be able to show up because now they're losing a blocker with all of it. Okay, we're going to zone blitz at this time. Actually, we didn't. Same thing for us again. Six technique, tackle blocks down. I'm stepping, I'm closing to his hip. He's going to end up spilling it, getting back up the field, cleans the whole thing up for the linebacker here. This linebacker needs to understand, okay, now I'm playing myself over the top of everything because there's a pull. They're pulling everybody this way. They ain't running the football back here. Okay, they're under center now. What they've done is they've created a what? An overshifted tight end set with everything. What we've done now is we've slid our linebackers like we were talking about versus a two-back formation. Same thing for us now. The weak safety's got to get himself down in a position where he can play the B gap with all of it. And you'll see a great picture of it from the end zone here. Overshifted tight end set, playing our three technique to the tight end side. Now we've slid the linebacker to a 50 and to a 10. Weak safety knows he's playing solo, he's vertical of that tight end, but because that is a tight end, I can play myself down tighter where now I can show up closer at the line of scrimmage if they're going to run the zone play in the B gap back here. Again, for us, how the whole thing should happen, G technique is the A gap player here, 5 technique is the C gap player, weak safety is the B gap player, slide Mike little line, middle linebacker is the A gap player, 3 techniques the B, uh, defensive end, the six technique is the C gap player, and the Sam linebacker doesn't have a gap. It's really going to allow us to play the zone where they cut that thing all the way out the backside. Sam linebacker now is patient, and he's going to go tackle that cutback with it because we're still playing the strong safety in an outside leverage position. Okay, again, see how squared up our stance is and how balanced our stance is as a six technique?
Okay, again, weak safety now. Got myself in position where I can go play the B-gap. We talked about this guy being able to show up at the line of scrimmage versus the run. The only thing I would have liked to have seen him do here is go tackle his legs. If we'd have done that, we would have been in perfect shape. Okay, again, we slid because it's an overshifted tight end set. Got to get myself in position where I can defend the B-gap, and if pass showed, tight end's my vertical. Okay, now we're playing a man concept. And when we're playing a man concept, we can get to this look two different ways. We can do it by playing man free, letting the strong safety handle number two and the free safety come down and handle the tight end and keeping a free player here. What that allows us to do with our linebackers, now we're not going to slide them. He's going to stay as a B-gap linebacker. He's going to stay as an A-gap linebacker with all of it. Who do we want playing that B-gap back there? Do we need a bigger, more physical body with all of it? Or how do we want to play the cutback coming back to the tight end side? Those are the questions we've got to answer ourselves with everything. But again, for us, what is it? It's one back, he's under center, everybody's got one gap. Linebackers could go up and play hawk and play it from two and a half yards. Okay, again, they're shifting 8,000 guys and everybody's kind of surrounding all of it. Here we go. Okay, it becomes an overshifted set. Now here comes the cutback with all of it. We're actually in a dime, a three-man front here with everything. And you can see this guy as a uh, quarter safety, again, where he's showing up, plus the backside weak safety of being able to come down. But again, it's no different playing a four technique than it is for our defensive ends of playing a six technique. They're now reading the guards. He's going to end up being the B-gap player with it. Everything's spilling outside here. We've got to be able to go show up, and we've got to be able to go tackle all of it. Okay, here's why you need to play slide versus 11 personnel when it becomes an overshifted tight end set. We didn't slide here, so the linebacker, he's got a gap inside with all of it, and we don't have a guy in a great position to go play the cutback with it. One thing as you set out practicing versus your offense, I, I think it's really smart that, that, that the kids know the mentality and the reason why you're doing a drill. For us, whenever we're in middle drill, middle drill is about a mentality, okay? It's about getting good at playing blocks, it's about being able to get off of blocks, and it's about playing leverage. We don't slant in middle drill as a general rule, okay? Now, at the same time, when you get to a, a team situation where maybe it's first downs, okay, now this is going to be a competitive drill. If the offense gets more than three yards, they win that snap. And if we're doing three snaps, there's always going to be a winner and there's going to be a loser during each segment that we go with it. And when it's one of those competitive deals, what do I have to do now for us as a unit defensively to go win that drill? Okay, but understanding when it's time to go practice together, like take Skelly, for example. Don't go kill one of your own wide receivers and skeleton. If you both get there at the same time, okay, let's go make a play with it. But if the receiver's caught the ball and taken three or four steps, don't go take a cheap shot on your own guy with it. Again, we've got to learn to practice together and make each other as, be as good as we can with all of it. But again, you can see how if we would be on slide now and get the linebacker over to a 50 and the uh, Mike linebacker to a 10, and here, now we're going to have a better job of playing the cutback coming out the back side of all of it. Okay, here's a better look. Now, once it became an overshifted tight end set, what did we do? We cheated the linebackers over with all of it. Again, defensive end, that tackle did what? He blocked down. He needs to get his eyes there, and he needs to continue to close off of his hip and go spill this deal. We're both standing here right behind each other with all of it. Get underneath and go spill it. Linebacker's going to be tight over the top of it this way now. Then the free safety's going to show up for support-wise wherever it's happening.
It's a good job by the linebacker stepping down tight, go ahead and spilling that thing, and now we've got to be able to show up from the safety position, and the other guy that can really end up showing up with this deal should be our cylinder linebacker with it. Doesn't need to run myself up here and block myself. I understand everybody's pulling with all of it. Stay, stay alive over the top, and let's go. What we didn't do now, the free safety did what? I came in here and I tried to tackle the guy high. We don't tackle high, go tackle his legs. Okay, here comes the read zone with all of it. Now we're reading it with the defensive end. He's going to step down here, and he's going to read the mesh of the quarterback with all of it. Okay, we're playing slide again, so the weak safety knows what. He's got that backside B gap if they hand the zone play off there. This linebacker needs to do his damn job, stay and play his A gap. Okay, again, five techniques needs to stay outside here. We've got a whole bunch of folks inside that are going to be able to play everything that's happening. They're coming down trying to crack the weak safety, but he did a good job of getting himself to the line of scrimmage with all of it now where they shouldn't be able to block him. If the five technique would just stay outside and do his job and we tackle, now they don't have anything. Every year we're going to go back and we're going to study ourselves. One of the, one of the first things that we're going to look at are any runs that happen over 10 yards. Okay, that's not a very good deal for us when we've got to run over 10 yards. What caused that? Was it schematically? Was it something fundamentally where we missed a tackle or whatever it is? And then we're going to look at how many passes we gave up over 15 yards with all of it. And again, the, the, the more we can eliminate explosives by an offense, the better we're going to be with all of it. Again, offenses anymore are trying to create different formations with everything, and all they're really running right here is kind of the, the, the peel play, the zone, divide zone with all of it, and trying to go up and block the linebacker with it, still zoning with the front up top. Again, it's really, they're getting in a two-back deal, but it's a one-back play with it. All right, here's a good example of some of the things y'all were asking about earlier. If we started here, this is our read side. And now they motioned and they created formation into the boundary. All the weak safety is doing is he's going from a high safety down to be the force player. The free safety's coming over and reading to this side. Again, he's got to get himself in a leverage position with all of it. And for us, we're running our linebackers through and playing man coverage right now. Again, what would have made this deal better if the strong safety and free safety would have banjoed those two backs. Again, Banjo's two on two for us. So as that back went away, the free safety would play him. The strong safety would sit here and play the back coming to us instead of crossing each other up with all of it. Let me get out of some of this Wyoming stuff for us here. All right, for us, it became an overshifted tight end set again. You see how they're trying to arc release the tight end here, trying to get our defensive end to widen out with him. He's reading the tackle, so it really doesn't matter with anything that happens with all of it. We're just playing read with it now. Quarterback keeps it. We end up gaining the defensive end back out with all of it. And because we slid our linebackers now, because it was an overshifted set, we've got two guys that are standing out here with really nothing to do. And again, I think the older you get as a football team, if I would go ahead and show in my gaps here and go ahead and then slide late with everything, now it's really going to mess with them offensively. Don't go line up in exactly what it's going to be.
really a quarterback power with all of it now. Blocking down, trying to kick out with the back and the, and the guard pulling with it. Again, defensive end, he's blocking down. He's seeing it. Linebacker did a great job of stepping around, and they couldn't get to him because he was so tight coming around it. Again, why do you play slide? To be able to stop the run to the tight end side with it. He stepped around. He's underneath it. Too tight, and the back couldn't get to him with all of it. Again, this time, instead of playing slide with it, we wanted to be able to drop the free safety down where he was going to be the force cutback player outside. Now again, because we didn't slide the linebackers, here's the B-gap linebacker. Don't go run down the middle of a fat guy. Go play my gap. Should be standing right here. He should be standing right here. Tackle the legs. Again, they started in a tray set with the back week. We wouldn't slide with the back week over here as a general rule. But now they bring him back, all their creating pro twins with all of it. Tackles blocking down, getting flat off of his butt, spilling everything. Linebacker's going to step himself around. And here we all show up with it now. Again, what kind of ways can you give, give your kids to be successful? Are they a team that's going to run it anytime that tight end motions back across? Is he always going to take you to where the play is? If he is, okay, do we want to slant to that deal? How can we set up something where we can gain a numbers advantage to what they're trying to do with everything? How can we smother and suffocate the offense with it? Okay, here's that deal when we're playing a solo call back here. Don't go until you know. I would like to see him pull his trigger a lot faster with all of it. Our defensive end did a great job of getting up the field and then coming back down on the zone play once that was the only spot the football had to go with everything. It's not very good by the weak safety. That's his B gap back here with all of it because we're in slide. Let's go. I can't lose my gap. Becomes a bomber call for us now. We're playing scrape and chase. We got zone play away. Defensive end's going to play the zone right now. Linebacker stepping around. Beat the block. And now let's say he didn't beat the block. He's going and he sees this guy blocking. We need to start showing up from a secondary standpoint with all of it now too. Again, what's our force player doing? I don't like that he's going and messing around and dancing with this guy. I'm the force player. It doesn't do me any good to go do this. Let's get myself up the field and let's go be physical with all of it now and let's go set the edge with it. We know we got plenty of guys that are inside running with everything. But again, what would have helped the linebacker? What did he try to do? Tried to tackle the guy high. Go tackle his legs right now, and I promise he'll go down. All right, we've got the lead draw now. We're in dime. I don't like what this strong safety's doing here, because again, what's rule number one? Don't go until you know. It's third down and eight. They're running the football, and we're dropping out here playing the damn pass. They're running it. Let's go show up. Don't go until you know. Now, because our linebacker didn't do a very good job, and there's really a couple of, of reasons why this happened. Three technique has really cheated himself too much where he can slant to get to where he's going. And the linebacker never threatened that B gap. If I'd have stayed in here and I'd have threatened that B gap and then walked out, 
and to force this offensive tackle to go ahead and come down to either the three technique or to the linebacker with it, and he couldn't turn him back, himself back out and giving us the B-gap with all of it now. And again, the other guy that ought to be able to show up versus this deal now is going to be this linebacker that's still here in the middle. He is a track linebacker for us. It's a much better job by the weak safety now of once he sees it, of being able to go make a play and fit where I'm needed to fit with all of it. But again, because we didn't do a good job of threatening that B gap with our initial alignment, it's going to allow this offensive tackle to get into playing games with all of it. Going to end up running the draw again. Where'd we end up? We ended up right down the middle of the fat guy. It's the worst position I can be in. Again, strong safety up top. Don't go until you know. They're running the football. Same thing with the linebacker. Again, if I've got to play myself a little bit deeper, I can see what's happening. Okay, we're playing squats and halves out here with all of it now. Again, what did he come do? Came and tackled his legs with it. Tried to tackle him high, gave him a chance to stiff arm us. All right, he's motioning across. We're getting back to a leverage position with a strong safety now. Becomes a solo call for us. Again, what's happening on the back side of this deal? Don't go until you know. I'm patient. Quarterback keeps it here. Gives us another chance to have a guy that's coming here. If I'll go make the play, we're going to make it as a, where's the ball at? 22-yard line? If he'd have gone and made the play, he could have made it for about a two-yard gain here. But instead of going up and taking my best shot and trying to tackle his legs, I broke down and I stopped, and I'm going to allow the quarterback to outrun me with everything now. I promise you right now, if I'll go pull my trigger and tackle his ankles, he's going to go down. Okay, again, it's a nice job by the weak safety of coming down and showing in the box as a linebacker and then getting myself back out of all of it. All right, now we're getting basically the lead play with it. Same PO play we saw earlier with everything. Because we've got a force player here, the linebacker can go ahead and end up wrong arming or spilling the lead block because now we've got a force player that's going to be here. Again, what should he do? This is the thing this kid struggled at most, and this is really the first year number one that ever really played for us. He struggled more on everything coming from inside out because he always used to slow down and then it became an oh shit reaction for us. Okay, how do I get him in a position now where he come, becomes more comfortable of going and taking my best shot with things? Okay, again, what kind of leverage are we playing with all of it now? Just the read zone coming back out of here. Quarterback keeps it. They're going to turn out and block the strong safety. Free safety and linebacker got to be able to show up. If he does come all the way out, strong safety's got to get off the block because he knows he's the force and contain player with it. Okay, here we go. Zone blitzing the deal again. Again, what you've got to decide in all of this stuff, do we want to end up trying to cross the center's face or is it more important for us to play wherever the tight end is with it? What plays do we have to stop with all of it? Again, we're coming off the edge. Here he comes to him. I've got to flatten myself down and go make it. 
And what, again, it's allowing us to do, now we're zone blitzing and we're playing halves. We're creating extra guys inside to go play the run with everything or different numbers of guys coming from different positions and still being able to play a half on top of it. Okay, we're in our three-man front again with it. Again, don't go until you know if, if I'm in the secondary with all of it. Okay, let's surround everything. Third and ten, they get five yards, let's go. Again, same thing for us now as a four technique. Reading the guard with it. Again, we tackled his legs and he went down with everything. Okay, 10 personnel look, getting the draw out of all of it. Again, we're playing our gaps with everything that happens. Again, if they're a big draw team, we'll do a lot of twisting or slanting up front, trying to cancel and exchange gaps with it. Okay, again, because of the down block, what did the defensive end do? He closed and he was tight, linebacker stepped around, went and made the play. Now they're trying to run the stretch into the boundary with it. Again, weak safety's coming up, and we're going more to a man concept, which is going to allow him to play tighter to the line of scrimmage with it than he would as a true quarter. But again, everybody should be in their gaps. If we got in trouble with it, it's because somebody got reached or somebody didn't get in their gap with it. G Technique pulls himself back out of all of it. Linebacker gets his ass cut off, didn't get in his B gap. Running the draw with all of it here. But that's basically 11 personnel in run game wise. 11 personnel really good, becomes pretty simple with how we're going to do it. Show you a little bit of 12 personnel here. One tight end, two backs with all of it. And kind of how we're going to surround what we're getting when we're getting an overshifted tight end set and everything. Right now it's balanced for us. So we're playing robber coverage, and we're playing a man concept back here. Again, where are our linebackers at? We're a lot tighter now. One back, we're under center with it. Defensive end got turned out on. He needs to stay in there and be that C-gap player, but the weak safety made him right because of the position we were coming from with all of it. Again, we're playing a tight or could conceivably be a field call with it. There's a three technique, A-gap linebacker, B-gap linebacker. But again, by playing right here, they can't step out and double team that six or seven technique and then try to come to the linebacker. Because if he does, we've run through and we've made the play. Hey, here we're playing halves coverage against all of it. Who becomes the cutback player now is the strong safety with it. But again, what do I need to do? Go take my best shot. Don't dive. Go run through his legs with it. Okay, now we're blitzing it from the field. Linebacker and safety from the field. Free safety's got that tied in. Backside weak safety has this tied in. I don't really like what this weak safety's doing because he's just going up here and burying himself with everything. Stay alive now where now I can go show up. Okay, playing robber coverage, playing Bronco up top with everything. Again, it becomes a one-back deal. We're all defending our gaps. Again, we've gone down and we've played Hawk with it. Again, see how balanced and square we are as a six technique? He blocks down, he's really squeezing and playing that gap. If this football comes all the way back out, here's our net that's starting to, to form around all of it. Okay, here comes the free safety now. He's gonna be there to play the cutback. 
The weak safety squeezing it down. He knows he can get the cutback or he can get the boot with it. Those are the plays I've got to defend. Now they're pulling everybody and their dog into the boundary trying to create levers. I think it's the center and the tackle that are pulling with all of it. Okay, again, you've got to be able to keep an, an offense honest by slanting up front and crossing their faces and getting them out of some of this. Okay, it's a great job now of this weak safety, of everything coming to him, of going up and being physical and not waiting on this big guy to come out and block me, of me really forcing the issue and going and creating an edge to our defense right now. Again, we did not hesitate back here with the free safety as he came across. Here we go, everything's downhill. I'm running the alley, I'm pushing it inside out. I went and I tried to tackle his legs. I didn't get him, but now it made him completely stop, and now we've got a bunch of other hats that are showing up at the football with all of it. I'm blitzing from the wide side of the field again with the linebacker and the strong safety. Playing man coverage. Again, the free safety has got uh, 84 in man. As he goes back across, he now becomes the extra guy that's going to show back up with all of it. Okay, now we've created a 4-3 concept by putting the strong safety in a hip, free safety here but still playing a man concept on the away side of all of it, where again, now we get a great safety run support wise here. And they're trying to freaking pull everybody in back block and we're getting everybody across the whole deal. Again, how can you really surround what an offense is doing with it? Okay, robber, man concept on the back side. Try to run the one back power out of all of it. As we get a down block here, nose guard's going to end up trying to cross the center's face. He's working across with all of it. Now we gain both linebackers. We get the backside linebacker who keeps himself alive because of the pull call, and he can show up with it. Okay, again, a 4-3 look by bringing the strong safety down to a hip with it, he knows he's the force player. He can't get himself caught up messing around with this guy in here. Becomes a read for us up front. Defensive end's got a read. And the thing that we really look at as a read technique is we want to try to be able to see the quarterback's hands with all of it. Again, how can you tell the kids about talking at it on film and studying film, what does that thing look like? We didn't get our linebacker shoved over here. He should be standing right here on the inside eye of that tight end. Where now as they pull, we should get this linebacker back over. Again, he's trying to play the pass first with all of it too. He buried himself. And what did the defensive end do? He didn't do a very good job of getting down and spilling this thing. He weighed and he caught at that thing. Don't catch it. Go make something happen. Go spill it and make that thing continue to bounce. But again, where did we tackle? We tackled his legs. It's a lot better look with it now of the same play. Because again, watch how much more physical and violent the defensive end is of coming down and squeezing and cutting that thing off. And the linebacker, backside linebacker with pull, gets himself over the top of all of it.
Okay, with this being an overshifted tight end set, if we wanted to go ahead and scoot or slide that, we would have initially. And then as they came back, then we'd go back to it. But right now, we talk about the strong safety being a force player. I think this is really a nice job of him of understanding the leverage of being a force player. So many times a kid will come out here and he say, well, coach, I was a force player just because he thinks the football went back inside of him. As I am that strong safety and I'm coming down to take on that block right now, I want to hit him in the mouth, and, but what I want to do is I've got to be able to anchor myself up. I don't want to run myself up the field four or five yards where I'm going to create a big seam in the defense this way where he's got more, more area to do things. I'm coming down and I'm constricting that hole right now. Again, it's a great job by the defensive end. There's the down block. He's squeezing, getting himself back under, spilling everything. The linebacker's fitting it tight. He's using the block of the pulling backside guard. Boom, now here comes our free safety. Okay, we're zone blitzing it now, coming off the edge with it. Again, what kind of different ways and what kind of different answers do you have to play different formations? That, that call sheet that we talked about, okay, how do we want to play base defense? What base defenses do we want to play? How do we want to get into zone blitzing it? Do we want to man blitz it? And again, so many a times on first down stuff, we want to create a second long. How do we go about doing that? If an offense is going to run the power play and get four yards, uh, we're going to have a big time problem because second and six is a lot harder to play with everything. Okay, we're man blitzing it again. We're slanting. Our G got cut off. He's trying to get here. This linebacker should be in the A gap. Again, start closing things down. Linebacker didn't get in his gap. He's the B-gap linebacker. There it goes, there's the B-gap. Cut back to all of it. Okay, again, weak safety as the solo player. Got to be able to go show up with it now. Linebacker really shouldn't be running through with everything going back over here against all of it. Again, how do you defend the formation? What do we want to stop out of it? Now, here's the first freaking play of the game. It was a hell of a way to start off the Rose Bowl. Okay, but what happened to us now? Weak safety stayed himself back here at eight or nine yards deep with everything. Didn't give himself a chance to get up here. They come down and crack him. The corner doesn't realize it's a crack. He blocks two guys by himself and their first play they rush for about 50 yards but again what have we done we slid the linebackers so now how do we combat that next time we may not slide the linebackers we may leave him back in the B gap where we get a bigger more physical guy here that's playing a little bit tighter than that weak safety is so now which way do we want to try to slant the front where we can overplay if we're going to leave the guys back here with it or do we want to go ahead and stay in that and slant our G technique to where he's a three and force that to be an A-gap play instead of a B-gap play with all of it now? Okay, again, you can see now they've created basically a two-back set for us. We've got 11 guys within about six yards, seven yards of the line of scrimmage with it. Again, how can we surround what they're doing? How can we get more guys at the point of attack than you have with it. Again, we've got to do a great job of fighting pressure. It's a down block. I just can't continue to let that tight end push me now. Here's a man blitz with it. Again, by man blitzing it now, we're coming off the edge. Everybody starts to show back up, and we really suffocate and can start surrounding that deal. That's 12 personnel run stuff.
show you a little bit of pass here with it now. Okay, we're playing a solo call again. So what's happening now, linebacker is wrong. Let the short wall go. Weak safety is wrong. Let the long wall go. Okay, free safety did a great job of open shuffling, driving back down on the route now. Okay, strong safety did a nice job of widening with number three, but then understanding what I've got and being able to sit myself back down where I can go play all of it too. And again, what did he do? He finished. Okay, again, free safety set himself down, sunk his hips. I started to drive with everything. Went and he stripped the football. But again, once pass shows, he's going to open his hips up and he's taking his eyes to this guy, and this is where he's looking with it right now. Okay, now man coverage-wise. We're coming off the edge. Shouldn't come underneath this deal. I ought to go play over the top. Again, not very smart with the corner being in press coverage. Don't get yourself picked with it. Okay, my guy stayed in and blocked, so okay, now let's be a smart football player and let's go help with everything. Again, the linebackers have got the back in man coverage. He blocks. We're going to end up adding both of them. Okay, now zone blitzing it. Coming off the edge, playing halves with everything here. Now let's talk about boot versus just regular quarters coverage or robber and some kind of quarters concept back here with it. We talk about it this way. Whoever my vertical is, if the quarterback is running sideways after he play actions, that's how we describe a boot. The quarterback's play action and then he's running sideways away from that play action. Now, if we get a boot read, whoever my vertical is with it, I'm now going to drive down and play my vertical if he's running across the field. If I'm the backside weak safety, I got action away from me, I know I can get zone cut back or I can get boot. If we're getting boot and my vertical runs sideways, I'm driving down and now I'm playing it. So if we were in zone coverage, the weak safety would drive down and play this one, free safety would play the front side tight end dragging across the field. Okay, what I don't like about this now, the strong safety, it was an overshifted tight end set initially. So we wanted to go ahead and scoot the linebacker. But as soon as they motion to empty, there's no running threat back here anymore. So what I should do, widen myself back out, where now I can have a better sense of playing leverage on what I'm about ready to have to play with it. Okay, again, motioning out to empty with it. We're zone blitzing at this time. Okay, again, it's that same route combination we saw earlier with the money route with all of it. Now, actually, this linebacker should have pushed down here with it, and we should have given the strong safety a call where he wouldn't go if they went to empty. It would become just a four-man rush for us instead of zone blitzing it. All right, we're playing robber coverage down here, playing a man concept up top. Again, the field corner's got to be able to run. I'm going to play myself far enough inside where I can play the post. Force him to throw this ball all the way out here. Now, again, when did he get beat? He got beat in transition with it. Okay, I've got to do a great job. And how can you work with this kid throughout the offseason and everything to where I get my hips open and I'm bursting really coming out of my drive with it. Okay, for us now, we played three deep, but we still played a man concept back here to get us a better post player 
in the middle of the field with everything. We do not play very much three deep coverage. Just because it's hard to ask this guy to be a backpedal player and then show up at the line of scrimmage versus the run. But occasionally we will mix some of it in. Bad by the away side linebacker and bad by the weak safety. As number two goes out, he should come look this one up. Okay, it became a wheel call. Weak safety needs to sit himself down. He needs to go drive with all of it. Zone blitzing it. Again, it's really a great job by this linebacker of playing his vertical, probably pushed him a little bit too much, but still being able to come back off on the dig route by the number one receiver. Half players playing more head up when we're zone blitzing with it, and here we go. They created a single receiver back here, so now we went back to a man concept with it. Weak safety turns into a pass. Now he's going to get himself out of here and go look with everything. Again, the corner understand it's a tight end, physical routes with all of it. Let's sit myself down and let's bang. Okay, what'd they do? They started in a one back look, we were gonna play quarters across here. Now they come over and they're gonna create what is a two back deal Okay, so now we're gonna bring the strong safety down to the line of scrimmage. We're gonna bring the free safety down here to five yards, and we're really gonna try to freaking overplay everything that's happening with this deal. Again, everything happened away from the weak safety. He's gonna be slow, looking for something coming back across with all of it. Again, here's a scissors route out here with it. When we're playing halves coverage, linebacker's going to come off on the inside one. Corner's going to stay and he's going to play the outside one. Again, they're tight. We want to get wide and we want to surround that thing. Okay, it becomes a max protection play action deal where they're trying to drive these guys across the field with everything. We're gonna end up getting the weak safety out of here to help look to this one. He gets underneath that deal just enough. We end up getting a pick on it. Again, what did he do? Went and tackled his legs again with all of it. Okay, that's some 12 personnel pass stuff. Let me... Okay, 21 personnel starting run game-wise. Again, two backs and one tight end with all of it. How can we come? How do we want to play it? Do we want to create a 4-3 by sliding the linebackers over? Or do we want to come down and do we want to play it as a, uh, as a quarters coverage where we get the free safety and strong safety down surrounding everything? But our big deal is going to be getting enough guys close enough to the line of scrimmage that we can go make plays with all of it. Again, we've got our three techniques set to the tight end side. We're reading it here. Down blocked by the tackle. Defensive end squeezing. This linebacker got himself too wide, though. He needs to fit tight right there and he needs to spill that thing. We got an unblocked free safety with it. Again, strong safety coming off the edge, becomes the force player with it. And here we go. Okay, this time now what we've done, we're gonna create a 4-3 by sliding the linebackers and bringing the weak safety down in the box with it.
Again, Sam Linebacker should be in a 50 alignment now. As this all happens, he's stepping around, and he needs to be tight, and he needs to get going with this whole deal. Okay, now this time they've given us formation into the boundary. We're going to zone blitz the thing. Crossing the center's face, coming all the way to the A-gap, coming off the edge with it. Again, how many different answers can you have and, and how can you go about practicing those things? We can do it because it's going to be the same concepts that are going to happen with everything that we do with it. Again, we're going to zone blitz from the split inside now. Again, what you got to decide, do I want to end up crossing the center's face with it and really overplaying the power and everything over here now? Okay, sliding our linebackers again. Did a good job of sliding them late. Again, now we've got to be able to go show up and we've got to make it. Our nose guard killed us here with everything because he fell down. Again, you can see how wide we're playing with our three technique with it. We'll have a chance if our nose guard just doesn't freaking fall down here with everything. Again, it became a two-back set, so this weak safety needs to get himself down a little tighter with everything. Slanting up front with it. Okay, now we're running man coverage against it, coming from the field with everything. Again, as I'm this strong safety going and I'm running a smoke, that back steps away, I need to think one of two things. I need to think zone cutback, or I need to think boot out of that quarterback. They hand off the zone, and four yards here is too much. He shouldn't have done it. He's got to get himself going quicker, and as that happens, choke my motor down, where now I can end up playing that, and I'll have a chance to knock that running back back instead of him falling forward with it. Again, we're going to zone blitz that deal. Now we can do it different ways. It's a lot better job of the patience that he has coming off the edge here. We could do this different ways for us now. If we wanted to get bigger to the tight end, we could still play a halves concept up here, but go ahead and let this free safety come down and play it as a man concept while still bringing the strong safety off the edge with all of it. Slanting everything into the boundary. It's really a good job by our G technique of crossing face, fighting pressure. Linebacker got in his gap and played the gap. Great job by the three technique of stepping here. And now here we go with all of it. And when he pulls up, we've got to be able to play it. Okay, now we're going to play man coverage and come from the split inside with it. Again, it's not a bad job by the weak safety of running his blitz. He anchored himself down right now. Linebackers are in man coverage on the backs. We step up and we go play it. Should be a little bit wider here as this linebacker. He knows everything that's happening is getting caved down here. But again, what did he do? Went and tackled his legs. This linebacker is about 203 pounds. Okay, playing halves coverage with it. We don't have anybody to spill it to now, so now the linebacker, he's got to box it back to the other linebacker on the lead play. That's a little bit of 21 personnel versus the run. We'll show you a few past things here. Okay, what'd they do? They end up getting down to a tight split, so we got wider and we surrounded all of it. Free safety still vertical at number two. 
depending on how we wanted to play this. We could play this as a man concept back here and let the linebacker handle the back out, and now we could do whatever we wanted to with the weak safety because there is no three vertical. We could play it in halves where it became a wheel call, where the corner would come off, and now I get myself over the top. This time we're handling it as a man concept. The linebacker needs to get his butt in gear and go cover that back out. And now we're going to play solo deep with that weak safety where, again, we can get him to the post with it if pass shows. Strong safety needs to be physical and he needs to engage this guy. We don't know if it's run or if it's pass. But again, everybody went away from him. Gonna allow me to take myself and go play. Not very many times in your life do you get to come completely free off the edge and freaking don't go tackle the guy. But again, instead of trying to tackle the guy's legs, what did he do? He went up here and he tried to reach for him. Went and tackled his legs. Man blitz him. Okay, again, we got a leverage problem versus what would be a running formation. So now here we go. We're handling all of it. Throws it to his guy, he goes and tackles his legs. Okay, again, here's the boot with it now. Strong safety, action went away. I know I get the zone cutback or I know I get the boot. Quarterback keeps it on the boot. Here we go. Great job driving down and covering my guy in man coverage. A little 21 there. 20 personnel, we don't get a whole lot of it because it's really going to allow us to surround everything that happens and we can get in a lot of different looks, zone blitzing, man blitzing, playing everything. Again, we're getting change of strength motion, coming down when we've got to get a force player and we've got to go over and we've got to read to that side. He's in a tight split so I'm still staying in a leverage position here with it. End up running the smoke draw with it. Again, playing our gaps. Kind of our philosophy we want to have defensively is this. If we go into a play, a game that's got 60 plays in it, we want to have 30 calls that are better by call than what the offense has. Now we've eliminated half of their plays. Okay? <laughs> You've seen us play base coverage to it one time, now we're zone blitzing it this time. Okay, again, it's a change of strength motion. Got to get where we've got a force player with it. Again, they're creating really a one back deal out of a two back formation. Trying to run the linebacker peel with it. Lost our backside linebacker and our G got too far up the field. Okay, again, linebacker should not be wrong arming, wrong arming it now because he didn't get a bonus call. There's nobody here for him to spill it to. Needs to stay outside, needs to go and attack it and turn it back to the unblocked linebacker. But again, talking about don't go until you know What's the free safety doing? He's sitting there, he's reading everything. Run shows, pulls his trigger, and here we go with it.
Again, playing a solo call with the weak safety doesn't need to be in a huge hurry with things going away from him. Again, he got himself where he got in a bad leverage position because he was trying to go fast over here when things happen. It goes away. Be slow. Think cut back. Think boot. Here we go, running the read zone with the option of all of it. It's a great job by our strong safety now of being a leverage and being a force player and getting myself up the field now where I can go be the pitch player and I can't get myself blocked. Free safety now is going to show up as the alley player. And it should be awful hard for them to run any of this read zone stuff without having a tight end in there with it. Because now we've got the defensive end. However, we're going to end up playing it. Or we've got the linebacker that's stepping around. There's really a good job. It's an overshifted tight end set. This is just the big fullback they put out here. We went ahead and we slid it. Weak safety's got to be in position now where I can come down and I can go play that B gap. And it's really a good job by the, the uh, G technique of using both of these blocks with it. Zone blitz. Let me get you to a couple of the bigger groupings here real quick. Okay, 22 personnel for us, two tight ends, two backs with everything. What we've done, we've taken a corner out and we brought an extra S2 in here. So we got two strong safeties, free safety, weak safety. We're actually going to man blitz this deal this time. Again, bringing the linebacker and the safety from the wide side of the field. Again, it's a good job of understanding and playing leverage with that strong safety as I blitz. I'm not just running myself up the field or getting myself in a position where I'm getting kicked out with all of it. I want to constrict that running gap right there with all of it. Not very good back here by our freaking G technique. Again, see the difference in now of how the strong safety is coming here? I don't like this because now the seam that we're creating here is too big of a seam. Constrict that thing as much as we can with everything. Go be physical, hit him in the mouth, and don't let him get out with all of it. Linebacker did a great job of stepping himself around, coming under and spilling that deal. Now by playing man coverage, we should be showing up and the free safety should be showing up at the point of attack with all of it. Again, it's a much better job by the strong safety now of the leverage that we're playing with it. Again, you can see how we're really starting to surround this deal now in man coverage with it. Being able to get enough guys down where you can go play everything. Okay, this is one where we didn't substitution it and we left the corner back in here with everything. Again, what do we want to play up front? How can we get the linebackers across? One thing we should do here is we should get a bonus call to this linebacker which would tell him he could spill it to this free safety here right here when everybody's fanning out. Now he'd be the unblocked player with it. Make that thing go sideways and make it bounce to our unblocked guy. Okay, again, it's a great job by the free safety of showing more of a deeper alignment before I came down and really started surrounding things with it. BYU did a couple of different deals to us that we had to end up tweaking as we went along. Because instead of fanning out here to our strong safety, they started taking that tight end up to the free. Our answer became, okay, let's go ahead and deepen this strong safety up. And if we were getting lead stuff inside, he became our extra player. Again, we got a chance to tackle him. We tried to tackle him high, and we didn't get it done.
Okay, again, we've surrounded everything that's happening here with it. That's a little 22 personnel with all of it. 